The first rule of macro trading is don't fight the Fed, meaning that it is ill-advised to take bets against the monolithic power of central banks. But one of the greatest investment puzzles of recent years is how investors who specialize in predicting how central banks are going to influence markets have actually managed to miss the biggest macro trade of their generation, being long stocks and bonds since the financial crisis. This week, the S&P 500 enjoyed its biggest daily rebound in two months, adding to confusion already caused by a first quarter where US stocks had swings up and down of more than 10% in some periods. Currency pairs have been moving all over the place and commodity price movements have basically been confounding experts. So all of this has made markets very confusing and so-called macro hedge funds have struggled. This volatile environment has meant that they've been unable to latch onto market trends for long enough to make money from them and have frequently been washed out by very severe bouts of volatility. These investors in turn complain that central bank manipulated markets have hampered their ability to distinguish between winning and losing trades. Very few have managed to make returns during this time that they're actually proud of and increasingly their biggest clients, the public pension funds, are voicing their disquiet. The painful fact for many of these macro trading specialists is that they have largely failed in achieving what they are paid to do, to identify how central banks will drive markets and then place their bets accordingly. Well, if with perfect hindsight a macro investor had decided in 2009 that central banks were going to succeed in reflating risky assets by keeping interest rates low, they would have bought up stocks and developed market government bonds. In doing this, in this case for macro reasons rather than a simple buy and hold strategy, an investor in the S&P 500 since the start of 2009 would have made compounded annual returns of around 15% once dividends were reinvested. The average return of macro hedge funds measured by the HFRI macro index, as you can see here, has actually barely broken out of low single digits over the same period. Hedge fund managers are going to argue that they're not paid to engage in such simple trifles as buying up indices of stocks and bonds. They will argue that they're not paid to be correlated to the broader market and that such an analysis fails to acknowledge how uncertain monetary policy has been since the crisis. But none of this hides the fact they have missed the biggest central bank driven trade of their careers.